episode of the Red Bull Rant is brought to you by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster, William Martin, Clayton John, and Christopher Admack. Now, on to the show. The Red Bull Rant is a free-flowing podcast with three soccer-loving idiots who don't know when to shut their dumb potty mouths. So, listener discretion, yeah, it's it's pretty much advised. Welcome, my friends, to the show of friends. This is the Red Bull Ram Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Iapico. I'm Pat McDonald. I'm Truman, and this is episode 325. I woke up in a great mood. I don't know what the hell happened. Seriously. What the hell happened? Well, I mean, nothing. It was for the Lucha Day. Oh, don't even get me started. Don't get me started. They fucked it up. You had it all in front of you, Red Bulls. You had it all in front of you. New York Red Bulls hosted Tim Howard and the Colorado Rapids in what should have been one of the easiest wins of the year, and they fucked it up royally. It's putting it lightly. Yeah, it really is. Uh, two nothing loss at home. Chance of Fire Armis or Armis out. I don't know which one exactly, but those were running through the arena towards the end of the game. And uh, this team in, in desperate need of an international breaks of soul searching. So I guess I'm going to wait to heal. <laughs> so I guess it's a good time that they're on a break now. Uh, Truman, do you have the tweets for this one? Yeah. Yeah, I got them. I got them. Um, uh, <clears throat> Travis Moose at Moose underscore Travis says Chris Armis should have should be fired as of yesterday. It's evident that he can't coach and only rode Marsh, Marsh's coattails. He's atrocious and his team is finished because of it. Didn't deserve the win. Don't deserve the playoffs and don't deserve our support right now. Disgrace. Uh, Casey Jones at Grateful Shed is the gif of the dumpster fire floating down the river, which is strongly accurate. Our good friend Anthony Aguirre said bad defensive decisions. An unlucky offense. Armas makes head-scratching decisions, but it's more than just all that. It's also clear the front office, the defense, and the lack of a true leader up top. I have no issues with youth, but a veteran who can still go would be a huge help to this team. Uh, Taxi posted a lot, like, he needs, we need a new coach, maybe Thierry Henry, and a picture of Falaba. So that's a lot of good stuff. <laughs> uh, and then finally, Mark Reitermeyer at M. Wrighty says, Wouldn't it be a little ironic if our next, co- next coach was from Red Bull 2? Since that's where most of our player signings were from, why not the next coach? I believe I made that suggestion before. Indeed. I, I, I should mention really quick that um, at Frank underscore Beard did also say we suck so much ass. We do. I mean, we lost to Colorado at home, who was on their third head coach of the year. So, mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. Uh, start with dislikes because I guess we got to be somewhat positive towards the end. Uh, Pat, we'll start with you. What'd you dislike about this one? Um, but you know, it's yes, the defense was bad, but once again, you can't win any games. You don't score any goals. And, um, Josh Sims may in six, four, five, four, however, however many games left we have him may turn out to be fine. But the fact of the matter is this team, since day one of this season, has needed an offensive difference maker, and Josh Sims just isn't that. Uh, again, may be fine, but, uh, you know, we need a real player, a real designated player who can come on the field with very little um, transition time and make a difference. And, again, Red Bulls decided not to do that, and they once again are uh, showing – Offensive anemia, especially with Brian White now out um, for God knows how much longer. Uh, it's 
It's long overdue. Uh, I believe I was talking to someone. I think it might have been Anthony Jeffer, actually, uh, that maybe the best thing that could happen to this team is them not making the playoffs because then maybe, just maybe, uh, Rebel Global will woke up, wake up and do something about it. It's not, it's not my dislike, but it's pretty sad that Josh Sims was probably the best player on the field. <laughs> oh, so guess, sad. Again, he may be fine. Like, I, I'm not like, but it, again, it's just, he's just not fine. Isn't cutting the mustard. That's exactly. the, right. That's the problem. Fine is yeah. fine is okay uh, if he's just filling in a role. That's mm-hmm. not going to help this team to any wins. Yeah. Uh, my dislike was just watching Jonathan Lewis dribble through the entire fucking defense and score a goal in the 14th minute. It was one of the most pathetic displays of defense I've seen from this team so far this year, and they've had many bad ones. But this one was completely abhorrent. Uh, he spun like three players around. It was disgusting. Um, sucked the life out of the entire game. It really did. And that was 13 minutes in the game, and they didn't, couldn't even fucking get close. Did they even have a shot on goal? Uh, they game? did. Just Tim Howard made a couple saves, uh, albeit not amazing saves. Was it, was it towards the end of the game or something? Yeah. Okay. My dislike, and I can talk more about it in the afterthoughts because I have some other stuff I want to bring up, but just once again, Chris Armis is not the coach this team needs. I think it's pretty clear that Armis doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, for the first, I think for the first time in at least the last two months, Armis wasn't even a better coach for a half of a game. Like, usually he at least has one good half. No, he had none this time. Against Colorado Rapids. Mm-hmm. Against Colorado Rapids, who had a new coach for this game. Yeah. Ex-Red Bull assistant coach, by the way. And it's just, and who, I don't know. I... It's between him and Robles, just, I, there's no leadership, no accountability. I know Robles keeps ta- saying the right things at the end of the game, but until it's... Till things turn around in the field, I I don't trust the leadership on this team. Nobody seems to want to step up and take that role on, not in a not in a meaningful way, at least. I don't think there's a player I don't know talented enough to be that guy. Yeah. I, I listen. I still like Kaku. I think he's played he's played fine this year, but I don't I don't think that's in him. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. just probably not the kind of guy he is. And I, yeah, I don't know who else it's going to be. I really don't know. We don't have the Dax McCarty. Like, where's that guy? You know, one of our other veteran players has been hurt and can't even fucking score a goal. Mm-hmm. All right, likes. Is there anything to like from this game, Chairman? You go first. Um, I I, yeah, I liked it when they almost scored in the first half, and I don't know, Jay, if you saw this, maybe not, but the uh, pyro guy set the flames off for like a millisecond. I did not see that. He was pretty. He was pretty short. Went in, and that was pretty hilarious. We uh, were like then not knowing that they would not score in that game. But. Uh, I liked that I was in enough pain and body weariness from Forza Lucha to not go to this game. So uh, I'm glad I didn't trade in my uh, points for those leather seats. Otherwise, I would have gone. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't have to sit through that. It's a smart move. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I got to suffer at home with free beer. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Red Bull Arena, but I would not want to be there for that game. I, I will say uh, my, my bonus like is, and we'll talk about this in Dumping Ground, um, what I did like was that it did not ruin my day because Forza Lucha was awesome. So I, it wasn't that I just drove out there for a game to watch them lose and drive home mad. At least the rest of the day was a good day. So There you go. Uh, afterthoughts. Well, so, uh, so two things. One, on Reddit, somebody asked if media in the – Media for this team would actually give Armus more shit for the job he's doing. And I kind of agree because once a Metro, which I don't know if you guys know this, I used to run. 
Uh, James Justice wrote basically an Armist apology piece saying it's all on Dennis Hamlet and Rebel Global for not giving him the tools he needs to succeed. Uh, he even titled it, quote, Was there ever faith in Chris Armis? Uh Answer is yes, because uh, he was the assistant coach for four years, and they put him in right away. Didn't even give him an interim tag. Just straight up made a head coach uh, last year when Jesse Marshall left. So there had to be some, you know, <clears throat> some faith in him. But here's the thing. The, the way Dennis Hamlet has been running the front office for the last year and a half is not much different than how it was running before Marsh left. Right. So the, the, one of the pieces, big sticking points was that we just kept pulling from Academy. We're not going out and signing big players. Well, that's great, but we've never, except for the first year when Ali Curtis was here and we landed Felipe Martins and Sasha question. We haven't done that. I mean, yeah, I, mean I, 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 I'm look, I'm looking over the last three years worth of roster transactions. And on the inbound side, there's not a lot that makes me think that they really did much. I mean, 2016, the biggest signing was probably Aurelian Collin because he solidified the, the back line. But I, looking in at that list, I don't see anybody else that stood out. Okay, Aaron Long, but he was from Red Bulls too. He wasn't really a, you know, outside, outside pick. 2017, same thing. Um, <clears throat> the biggest person I see on this list is uh, honestly maybe call no not even that um no there's nobody on the list for 2017 that could say even is what's worth a damn because um most of these players are already with the team okay actually you know what maybe uh now i see this michael moreo because he had a good 2017 but then 2018 no there's nobody else there's the biggest thing I can see off the top of my head is Vincent Bezacourt, and we'll, except for getting hurt a few times, he hasn't really done much. I mean, this this is I'm oh, sorry, Tim Parker was last year too, but that was because we got rid of Felipe. Um, but this is the mo the team's been operating under. This is nothing new. It's not it's not like we spent four years building a juggernaut and all of a sudden just said screw it, we're just gonna buy cheap. The Red Bulls have had the, the cheapest payroll for what, like two or three years now? Like, this is how things are. Jesse Marsh was a good enough coach to be able to work around that, get the best out of his players. Armis isn't. Taking Wright Phillips out of the equation, that's, I'm, I'm going to say generously, nine out of 11 starters from last year. Right, I, kept, I keep harping on 10 out of 11, but I'll take Wright Phillips out because of the injury stuff. Nine out of 11 starters from a not only supporter shield winner, but best in MLS history regular season team. And this is the shit we pull? No. Fuck, fuck the fact that the front office is doing this. Armis has a job to do, and he's not doing it. Pat or me? Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Pat. <laughs> where, where do you want to go? I mean, look, the article's not wrong. They need reinforcements. That's been clear for a long time, especially if they want to win MLS Cup. Uh, they're just not going to beat teams like LAFC and uh, and Atlanta, no matter who the coach is, um, when it comes to push, because they just don't have that difference maker. Um, but Chris Armas has made a number of boneheaded decisions uh, in this uh, roster. I mean, what was it, a couple games ago when he benched Kamar Lawrence for defensive continuity? I mean, it, it, yeah. he's and, – and he's shown that, yes, he's he can – Aside from this past Saturday, he's usually maybe good for a half, and then another half he's out coached. Uh, it's been shown time and time again, absolutely. Um, Jesse Mar certainly got a raw deal by segments of this fan base who said he was never good. They tried to call it Ralph Ball, say that everything was dictated to him from the top. It was nothing could have been a bigger crack of shit, in my opinion, and it's now extremely clear that's that's the case as well. Um, but yeah, I guess it's the the Armist apologists are the ones who left, left over who read that random article last year that because of advanced passing statistics, Armist was a better coach. Never mind the fact that even as soon as Marsh left last year, there was a notable drop off in performance of this team. They got the got the job done because they still had Tyler Adams to clean up, um, you know, clean stuff up. Same with Kamar Lawrence. Um, but I mean, the, uh, uh, there was a notice, noticeable drop off in the offense, and it's never really righted itself. 
I mean, Kaku had no assists after Armas took over yep. mm-hmm. at the, at last season. I mean, and his production this year is, I don't have numbers in front of me, but I imagine it's still relatively down compared to last year's, the first half of last season anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to add on that I think, you know, the points of front office and the points of Armas are both valid. I think the problem with front office is that Jesse Marsh was able to coach a, a good team to playoffs. Unfortunately, like Pat says, they didn't have that guy to get them over to win a championship. And you look at the teams that win championships, they have that guy. Uh, This team has neither. It doesn't have the coach to really motivate the team, and it doesn't have a star. And it's really glaring. It's like this game was so glaringly obvious with all the deficiencies. Um, You can kind of overlook a road loss to NYCFC. Again, they're a good team. They have a good shot of winning uh, the Eastern Conference, you know, with games in hand. This game is inexcusable. It's inexcusable when you're playing one of the worst teams in the league, uh, traveling, like you said, on the third coach, uh, missing players, the whole thing, and you look pathetic. Uh, Mario didn't start again. Uh, what the? What is the? What are you fucking doing? I mean, I I feel like he's lost the players. Um, there, there's, I'm sorry, this exact squad would have beaten them if, if a better coach was on the team. Because Jesse would have thrown a shit fit in that locker room at halftime. Like, he would have lost his mind. And I don't do, I don't, I don't know. I don't, have you seen Chris Armas? Have you heard anything about this guy getting mad? Getting upset? I'm sure he has a temper, but you don't hear anything about them being mad. I mean, he was mad about time-wasting after the NYC game. Great, time-wasting. Uh, we time-wasted in D.C., so we did the same damn thing. I watched it happen. Um, so I, that that's fucking pathetic and nothing. Who cares? Um, this is the inexcusable game. Now, I will say this. I'm sorry. It does not give supporters uh, the right to chant songs about fighting Chris Armas. You're supposed to support the team on the field. That's what all the, half of these songs are about. I'm in the section, okay? I have the right to bitch. Uh, half the songs are about supporting your team. So let's leave the fire armors chance for other people. I, I hate that shit. Just just watch the game. Yeah, I'm pissed off too. Uh, which one of our, our our listeners said that Armas should have been fired yesterday? Um, uh, I'm gonna go back and find who it was because I'm gonna credit him again. Um, Travis Moose. He said he should have been fired yesterday. I don't understand any other team. He would have been gone after that game. Mm-hmm. The, any any other team, you that is an inexcusable loss. A mediocre team, probably going to get in the playoffs because I don't think they're bad enough to not get in the playoffs. Um, I think they're just good enough just to be finished fifth. Um, they're only like a point out of fourth place, which is really sad. Um, cool. but they're, they're, only four, they're only four points away from missing the playoffs, though. Right, because it is a tight Eastern Conference. But yeah, so okay, so like you said, if they're four points out of missing the playoffs. Where's the shakeup? I'm sorry, you know what the shakeup isn't? It's not benching Michael Murillo. It, it's not. It's it's the the players can't go, and it has to be on the manager. And Armas is just not. He's not cutting it. But I mean, listen, he wasn't fired after this game, so he you know he's not going anywhere for the rest of the season. Like this is it. This is what we're stuck with. I mean, he should have been fired in that early season swoop when he dropped all those games at home, and uh, <laughs> you know. And with this past Saturday, he is now just adding to his uh, his the worst home season in Red Bull Arena history. A feat we passed a long time ago. Mm-hmm. The stadium was fortress for nine years. This year, it's not. It's it's pathetic. Um, more losses in 2019 than 2018 and 17 combined at home. Yep. So there you go. Uh, it, it's just it's it, it really uh, he needs to go. He won't go. I, I'm extremely skeptical the team will make any changes even in the off season. Uh, aside from like, hey, look what we found, someone in Bulgaria, you know, uh, and try and claim that that's a, the next big thing. Um, so I'm not holding my breath, unfortunately. Um, but you know, there's also no media covers this team, so there's nobody putting the pressure on. So what do you what do you expect? Home losses to two um, non-playoff teams because we lost to Orlando at home as well. Yeah. And did we lose to Vancouver at home? Yes. 
Oh, I'm right. going to look it up. I'm pretty sure it's we so did. It's so hard to remember anymore because they've been so fucking bad. <laughs> so do you guys remember months ago when he was talking about um, – so uh, – shit. Okay, we did not beat Vancouver. Or we not to lose to Vancouver. But I think we drew them at home. It's possible. Yep, we drew them 2-2 two, two in May. Mm-hmm. Um. But do you guys remember months ago when Armus was talking to, when the, during that first swoon, and his response was, "People shouldn't be so focused on the now; they should focus on what's happened." Well, how did that turn out, Chris? <laughs> because I'm pretty sure, you know, we've been not that great since then. We haven't won more than two games in a row. The best stretch we had was. From May 11th to June 1st, where we picked up four wins and a draw in five games. I mean, yeah, I get it. You can lose to some good teams like LASC, but you lose 2-3 at home to Columbus. You lose 2-0 at home to Colorado. Earlier in the year, we lost 1-0 at home to Orlando. Uh... 2-1 at home against Minnesota, who was still struggling at that point because they hadn't opened a new stadium yet. Columbus, another non-playoff team. Yep. Uh, Montreal, we lost, too, right? We lost 2-1 to Montreal when they were on short rest and we weren't. Or no, we, no, we, we both had short rest, but they had to travel woes. Like, how many of these games had to happen? When we, we were up 2 nothing at Philly and blew a lead in, at the end of June. Or beginning of June, sorry. Like, we lost 4 nothing at Houston. I know Houston's a better team this year, but 4 nothing on the road is still not good. Uh, put up or shut up time, and you're not putting it up. Yep. I mean, if there was something that we could say they were building towards, maybe it would be one thing, but... We've been building for, what, since 2015? Isn't that yeah. the whole point of this? Yeah, what are, what are we building towards? Uh, I mean, it... it the writing is on the wall. There's going to be even fewer people in the stands next year. It's a farm team. What? What? what <laughs> who are we farming at this point? Because <laughs> I think value on everyone has plummeted this season. Like I said, you can be a farm team and be successful. Look at Salzburg. Jesse Marsh has went in, won six straight games in the league. He's going to be have a Champions League match against. Uh, what was it, Liverpool and Celtic in the same group, I think? I yep. can't remember who the fourth team is, but Salzburg is a quote Salzburg is a farm team also, but you can still produce. Mm-hmm. Part of his front office. I will I will say that. The front office has not been great over the years, but a better coach in Jesse Marsh was able to do a lot with that team, considering. And if, honestly, he hadn't left last year, I honestly think we had a realistic shot at winning MLS Cup at home. Maybe. Real quick correction. Uh, it's red. It's uh, Salzburg, Liverpool, Napoli, and Gank. 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 Oh, sorry, I, th- I, I saw Pat say go Celtics. I assumed it was in the same. <laughs> same Gank. League. But still, they're in, they're in Champions League. Mm-hmm. I know he wasn't the reason. Was over League, Champions but. League. But I mean, like Jesse Marsh picks up a winner or two in Champions League. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. No, no Jay, he doesn't have the advanced passing statistics. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power of the power advanced passing statistics. Yeah. All right. uh, any other afterthoughts to this game? Nah. <sighs> I don't. God, what's left? Nothing. Nothing. Burn it. Burn the game to the ground. Okay. So here's the playoff picture right now. Uh, Red Bulls currently sit fifth in the East with 41 points. Uh, DC, I think one over the weekend, say leapfrogged them. Uh, we are. Ten points back of Philadelphia, who's in first. One point back of D.C., who's in fourth. And that's important because of the first round uh, playoff game at home. We are four points ahead of Montreal, who's currently in eighth place. So very tight. Uh, 
very tight to uh, for the Eastern Conference. And it, I apparently was wrong last week. My number fifty three. I think when I did the math this week, it came out to forty nine points. What we need to win the to make the playoffs because Montreal right now has uh, four games left. So the most they could pick up is twelve points, which gets them to. Uh, 49, so actually, I'm sorry, 50 points is what you would need to make the playoffs. Uh, prediction contests, none of us got it right. We all were too optimistic. Idiots. So, I did say last week that my gut said that they were going to lose this game, but they I mean, couldn't, couldn't go against uh, Fors Lucha Day. I mean, I, pre- I said that I had to hope that they would be Columbus at home, Fors Lucha Day or not, so... I'm sorry, Colorado at home. So, uh, New York Red Bulls 2 is currently in progress against Indy 11 0 0 in the 68th minute. Sky Blue, nothing's happened since their last, uh, since our last episode. They play Saturday, 3 p.m., uh, versus the North Carolina Courage. Well, I mean, technically, a lot of stuff has happened to Sky Blue. So, uh, do you want to explain? Because honestly, I've been kind of, uh, Checked out a lot of things. Yeah, Elise LaHue has just been named uh, the official, uh, I guess she was interim general manager. She is now the general manager um, of the team. And I'm going to scroll back one second. And they just named, let me hold on, uh, Freya Kumbi, Kum, Kum, Freya, Freya Kum. Uh, she's going to be the interim head coach. That means the guy who was interim head coach, he goes back to being goalie coach. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, Lori, oh, man, these are some tough names. Iori, <laughs> I want Jay to read all of these. Nope, Iori nope. Vichniakov is uh, the assistant coach and developmental advisor. Uh, Marsha McDermott, technical advisor. So big shakeups in Sky Blue. Um, I actually just heard... Was I listening to Sirius XM today, um, hearing Elise LaHue uh, interview, talking about all the moves and everything being made. So she really wants more games at Red Bull Arena. Now, if that happens this year, I don't know, but I think I guess that'll be the push for next year, right? You can only hope. hope. Yeah. Who's so, the question? Who's, what, here's the question. If the, Sky Blue plays at Red Bull Arena last year, who draws more? Hmm. <laughs> <Red Bulls>. well, <laughs> I mean, you look at the records; it's probably still going to be the Red Bulls. All right, so uh, time for dumping ground. Um, first, we'll start with the reason why the Red Bulls don't have a game this week, and that's because of international break. Uh, Red Bulls are one of those teams that are not playing this week, thankfully. Uh, the U.S. have has two games. Sorry, the U.S. men has two games this week. Uh, the first will be uh, versus Mexico on Friday, September 6th, 8.30 p.m. And uh, the second versus Uruguay on uh, September 10th at 8 p.m. Let's keep fucking playing Mexico 4,000 times. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, go- we're going to once this stupid CONCACAF Nations League happens. So, so tired of them playing them. And then what is it the Europe? Like? It's, it's probably, it really has probably more to do that everyone now has their nation leagues. And so now nobody's really playing interconference friendlies as, as much as they used to. So that was that's why Europe did the Nations League. They didn't want to give South American and Concacaf teams free looks at their squads essentially before the World Cup. And they didn't want to give them access to the uh, the qualif- or the um, confederation bonus, right? In the FIFA rankings. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really what that's really what it was about. Is protection us for the FIFA rankings? Yeah. Why can't we just keep playing Canada so we can hear that sweet anthem? <laughs> Why can't we just play the anthem anyway? Oh, that's another good idea. <laughs> we don't need to play them to play the anthem. <laughs> All right, so Pat, you're kind of a resident U.S. expert. Do you want to talk, talk about these games? Uh, you know, really what you're looking for is just a continuation of the growth that you saw during Gold Cup. Um, that. Unfortunately, players like Tyler Adams are still. I believe he's still out with an injury. Uh, if you're interested in the Red Bulls, Aaron Long is there. Josh Sargent will be in this roster. A couple of other youngsters that shine in the U20 World Cup, like Paxton uh, Palmkill, is in it. Um, I forget who else. Uh, but yeah, it's you know, it, it's more of the youth movement in many ways, um, and really it's just a matter of seeing 
a lot of them play. Uh, Bradley and Altador are not in this roster, if I'm not mistaken, because they were left with uh, uh, Toronto because Toronto's in the midst of a playoff push. Is Toronto playing this week? Two teams that are. Oh, yeah, Toronto's playing. Imagine that. So, yeah, I have nothing to add on the U.S. men because I have not been dialed into anything. So, as again, you just want to see growth. That's it. All right. So, anybody else have anything for that big round? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, did we talk about Champions League? Just so we can tell that there's two other Red Bull, Red Bull teams are in it. No. Well, we talked briefly for Salzburg. All right, so who do you think goes through? All right, Group E, like we said, is Gank, Liverpool, Napoli, uh, Red Bull, Salzburg. And then uh, Leipzig has Lyon, Benfica, and Zenit. So who do you think has the better chance of going through? Leipzig has a better chance. Yeah, definitely Leipzig. Uh, but I'm also going with Jesse Marsh, shocking the world, baby. He not only is going to be the first American coach in the Champions League, he's the first one in the group st- or in the uh, knockout phase. Yeah, I mean he could beat Gank. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if they can, how they'll do against Napoli. That's that's the big question mark. If they can pull off some points against Napoli, I could see Salzburg going through. Napoli. I mean, yeah, they might get a couple wins. I mean, they ain't getting you know. No, but, they're gonna they're gonna lose both to Liverpool. I mean, that's yeah. just realistic. Yeah. I could see them pulling, I guess, four off of Gank, and then if they can pull four off of Napoli, then that would be – or even three off of Napoli. That would probably be enough. Uh, what, what I'm hoping is that more of Liverpool's um, group games get broadcast because, uh, like, last year not a lot of them were. And I say that just because I, I'd like to see Salzburg. Like I'd love to see Red. I I want to watch Liverpool play in Salzburg. I think that would be a pretty cool game to watch. Well, aren't they free on the BR app? I don't know. Even on the app, sometimes it, it was like tough for me to find those games. So hopefully they'll be a little bit easier. Well, I mean, last year was the first year, right? So you figure some, there's some growing pains and stuff, right? And I mean, there's a shit ton of games going on, which makes it a little harder. Yeah. True. But I mean, come on, defending cup champions, they better be on. You know. Every freaking time. They should be on for the most part. All right. Nothing else? Nothing Forza Lucha ish? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's let's talk about Forza Lucha. It, it was it was a great day. It was a great day. Uh I haven't gotten any money totals yet, but I thought it was a good crowd. I thought the show it, uh it was under three hours, which is pretty good for nine matches. That's very impressive. Um Pat, I don't know. I mean, you were busier than I were. I, I mean, I was running around, so we were busy in our own way. I was shooting promos, walking around the whole time. Um, you were recording the whole show. But I don't want to make anyone mad, but I'm just going to say I think my favorite match for now was the best of the worst. Uh, <laughs> that match probably la- made me laugh the most. I, I loved I loved slash hated it because it was the best of the worst. Um but I thought the show overall was fantastic. Uh, yeah, it was a fun show. Uh, it's, it's, you know, sometimes it's a little tough to kind of gauge it from my position of constantly running around and really focusing on angles and not really trying to, and not really focusing on what's exactly going on in the match. Um, but I, I can only say that I hope uh, Billy Avery is a Force Lucha regular. Here yeah. Now. Yeah. I think, you know, barring unforeseen circumstances, he has now become, the one one of our new legends. Yes. If you've never seen Billy Avery, uh, I hope I don't know if any of his matches are on YouTube, but you should go watch them. Yes. Because he is not on social media whatsoever, anywhere. You can't find him. He can't be. He can't be found. That's sort of impressive for yeah. this, for this day and age of wrestling. Yeah. All right. Um, is that uh, up or? Yeah, one one more thing. Um, wait till you see the backstage interviews. They are amazing. There you go. Is, when it's all edited, it's going to be on Powerbomb still? 
Uh, well, it's now independentwrestlingtv.com, but yes. Okay. I didn't realize you changed your name. All right. Uh, so is that it? Is that it for Dumbergrammed officially? I believe that is it. Yes. All right. So then that means it's time for Pat's betting corner. All right. Well, there's not a lot of games this week, um, but I mean, there are three that I kind of like. Um, uh, this Saturday, you got, so it's five games total. Uh, I'll give you a, a full rundown. Uh, I'm going to say NYCFC goes over New England. Toronto goes over Cincinnati. LAFC goes over Orlando. Seattle goes over Colorado. And Portland goes over Sporting. But if I were going to do a three-team parlay, I would go Portland, L.A., and New York City FC. It must make you nauseous. It's not fun. But I like money. So it's funny. I talked about that move before. Uh, my neighbor next door, their son is mowing the lawn for me. And uh, the, the mom comes out and she's telling me how it's the, the hardest she's ever seen him try for something. I was like, well, money's a great motivator. <laughs> <laughs> Young kid getting paid money to mow a lawn. I mean, it'll do things for him. So. Yep. All right. Uh, so it's time now for Truman's Terrible Team of the Week. Well, it's us. Duh. <laughs> I mean, it's us. We watched it happen. But I will give you a runner-up. I will give you a runner-up. I mean, clearly it was us by a mile. That's what you're writing down. Uh, the runner-up I will give to LAFC for losing at home mm-hmm. to Minnesota 2-0. Uh, Minnesota, not a, a, a terrible team. Um currently sitting in third place so but still that big old right they they had they only lost what one game at home yet right so that i think was their second all-time home loss to point that pat is being attacked by a cat i am i'm gonna have to find a way to make this a video podcast just for the cats now (laughs) (laughs) this one is ridiculous with the nuzzling look at this (laughs) yep that's it you you can't see it uh, no, hold on, Lord, print screen. Print she screen. does this. There we go. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely putting that post, I'm putting that uh, photo up on the Red Bull rant. I'm just trying to push my laptop off my chair. <laughs> she doesn't want you to talk to us anymore. She's like, it's my <laughs> turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think we can wrap this up. Um, you guys know nothing else, right? Nah. All right. Nope. You can visit us at patreon.com slash rebelrant. One buck a month is all you need to get exclusive content, such as our monthly wrap-ups, live post games, anything like that. And we I need to talk about some point doing an August wrap-up because we're kind of behind on that. Um, email us, redbullrant at gmail.com. If you want to call us, 973-348-5329. Facebook.com slash rebelrant on Twitter, at Red Bull Rant for the show. At Dr. Stu for myself, at PMAC, DA2 for Pat, at The Truman for Truman. Subscribe to the show via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast. Last words before we get out of here. Uh, we suck, and uh, oh my God, I, I, why do we have to keep playing Mexico? That's it. Uh, yeah, USA, keep growing, I guess. And Red Bulls, uh, you're the reason I drink. No, I can think of is uh, what is it, Meredith from The Office, when when they were doing the roast of uh, yep. Michael Scott. Exactly what I was referencing. <laughs> All right, so for Pat Truman and myself, this has been episode number uh, three hundred and twenty-five of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in, and since we're on break, go USA. I picked the wrong time to stop stiffing glue. America! Fuck yeah!